good to have Patricia Howard here also to be able to play. play the How many of you have tried to use the point of giving, the uh, credit card giving? I have TNT. TNT. Yeah, I don't mean. I just mean to try it anyway. Okay. Let's, let's, uh, online. Online. Yes. All right. You can do it online, or you can give through the swipe of the card or a pat, whatever. Whatever technology you use. <laughs> okay, let's start on the right today. First, yes. 77. 77. <laughs> <laughs> and they named you Angel after that? Did he say 77? 77, he did.
good. Just so you know, Maggie, in case you have a chance to give another, you know, VBS, 
singing new songs that we've never sung before isn't a draw. <laughs> there, are, there are lots of facts about church we don't discuss. <laughs> okay, we're going to pray in a moment. Mona Powers needs our prayers. Let me see. She's 100 and uh, flying to Iowa with her son and is very weak. Alice Colson is under hospice care. I want to keep her in our prayers. Lee is having a hip replacement Monday, uh, the 1st, which is tomorrow. Wow. Uh, I just got word that Joyce Raidersdorf is going to be moving. Is that okay to mention? Okay. <laughs> to Washington State. So. Out of state, so we need to give her our prayers and send her a card and let her know that we love her and are going to miss her a lot. Um, others that you would like to mention at this time, yes, in the back. Okay, lots of people traveling. I don't know why anybody would want to leave Phoenix this time of year. <laughs> Carol, my nephew Michael Cook, uh, let's pray that his prostate cancer is not as serious as they think. Okay. Thank you. All right. Yes, uh, Yvonne. I had a uh, successful eye surgery. I can see now. Yay. My husband got his teeth the next day, so. <laughs> we praise the Lord for everything around here. I'm telling you. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Prayers for the families of the hot shots from Prescott. It's six years today since the 19 of them died at the Arnell fire. Okay. Mary, in case you don't know, take off those dark glasses so they'll recognize you, Mary. Just Okay. She's, she's a famous artist. She was featured in the Sun City Independent with an art show and this just last week, so... Congratulations, Mary. We're proud of you. Yes. And I pref you know, you I did notice. I put it up on the on the bulletin board in the in the office area. Yes. It was a nice picture. Oh, thank you. And I performed their wedding and they're still together. And that's a that's, that's a good thing. There you go, Verge. Okay. Yes, Fred. Okay, we sure need to pray for Donna and the family after, uh, after Ralph's passing. All right. Yes. Okay. Yes, Phyllis. We need to continue to pray for Robert as he goes through this healing process. Okay. First responders. Mom's not here. Yeah. <laughs> Military and first responders. Okay, yes, John. How about Linda? Yeah, Pastor Linda is still recovering at home. She has a fractured sacrum. She uh, fell backwards a week ago Friday at a concert and on the concrete off of the top, off of the step anyway, and uh, put a big knot on the back of her head. And uh, anyway, we're afraid that she, and she also has a fractured vertebrae about T9, something like that anyway. So uh, she's in a lot of pain and moving very gently and slowly. I've taken her food a couple of nights and she's doing okay. She's making it on her own, but anytime she has to bend over or do any kind of movement like that, it's really, really painful. So she's taking one more Sunday off and uh, we'll be here, you know, whether she has to preach on a stool or laying down, you know, she, <laughs> she, will, she will be preaching next Sunday. So that's what she says. We will see. John and I have a sermon ready, just in case. You know. Okay. All right. Anyone else that you'd like to mention for prayer? All right. Let's pray together. Loving God, we thank you that you know us so well, that you have loved us since we were born, and before then even, 
that you have not only love for us, but you have a plan for our lives, Lord, even for today. Help us, Lord, to live more like Jesus, to be more compassionate with each other and less judging. Help us, Lord, when others hurt us or offend us in some way that we forgive them quickly and that we allow your healing process to take place in our hearts and in our lives. We pray, Lord, for Mona, and we pray for Alice and for Lee. We pray for Joyce, Lord Raidersdorf, and we pray for the, this one that's going to be traveling for Mike Cook and that his surgery will not be as serious as is, was expected. Thank you, Lord, for a successful eye surgery with Yvonne. We thank you, Lord, for the families and the comfort that your Holy Spirit brings to those who passed away in that fire so many years ago. We pray, Lord, for the family of Ralph Dittman, especially for his wife, Donna. Pray for Robert as he continues to go through a healing process. We pray, Lord, for our military and our first responders and those who stand in harm's way, Lord, to give us safety and freedom. We pray for Pastor Linda that you would heal her fractures in her back, and we pray that you would give her a comfort and just a, a release from the pain that she's experiencing. We pray that you would help each of us, Lord, to see those around us who need to come to Christ as their Savior, that we would love them all the way to the cross. And now we pray the prayer that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and give us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's welcome the greatest preacher that's going to be preaching at this pulpit this morning. <laughs> narrows it down. <laughs> <laughs> I did neglect last week to uh, mention one other action at the uh, annual conference that you may be interested in. Uh, the bishop did appoint me to Lakeview uh, Methodist Church for one more year. So I'm, you're stuck with me. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, at least another year. That's right. At least another, this year. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> well, uh, we're going to be uh, working out of Galatians chapter 5. This is a familiar chapter to many of you. Uh, I want to read just a few verses, but uh, as always, I encourage you to later go back and read the whole uh, chapter, if not the whole book. Spend some time in it this week. I'm going to begin with verse 1 of chapter 5. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then, and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. And then down to verse 13. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the sinful nature. Rather, serve one another in love. The entire law is summed up in a single command. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you keep on biting and devouring each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. This is the word of God for the people of God. Would you pray with me? Lord, as we consider your word today, I pray that you would speak through me uh, for the words that you have given today. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. With the uh, apologies to our young guests today, I'm going to be preaching about kissing today. <laughs> you know, when two pairs of lips meet, sparks fly, don't they? Why do we kiss? Well, it feels good, right? It's in the Bible, too, really. It is. Kissing is in the Bible. But no one can say when it started or why, but we like to kiss. Studies of kissing habits show that people ages 18 to 24 have make-out sessions about 11 times a week. 
By the time people hit age 45, it tapers off just a smidge. But uh, there is studies that show that uh, people over 45 are still engaging in some 31 passionate kisses every week. You know, and it's really nice to wake up next to, the, to someone and give them a big smooch. One fella did that, though. Um, they won't let him fly on Delta Airlines anymore. <laughs> It, it, it really helps if you dating the person before you try to kiss them. <laughs> In other cultures, kissing is really quite common. But I, I wonder, how many times do you do that air kiss thing, you know, cheek to cheek? You know, do, is it just once or is it twice? Or do you, you do one side and the other side and then come back again? It's also confusing sometimes. <laughs> July 6th, you may not know this, is World Kissing Day. Ooh, yeah. So after you set off the fireworks and finish off the hot dogs and apple pie, start some personal fireworks and kiss someone you love. Ah, there is a point <laughs> to all this talk about kissing. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> you were hoping I was going somewhere, weren't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, and it relates to the Bible in our passage today. You know, the Bible has so much to teach us and tell us about interpersonal relationships with each other, especially the New Testament. And Galatians 5 is this chapter on the fruits of the Spirit. These actions that feed and nurture our relationships, and they make us feel good when we do them. They help us grow as followers of Christ and to be his servants toward other people, and in the process, we help to reveal Christ to those same actions. But this metaphor of fruit, I think sometimes is a little overused, and it's easy for us just to kind of brush it off. You know, we know about the apples and oranges and peaches and all those things. So uh, what if we were to look at these nine virtues of the Holy Spirit as kisses from the Holy Spirit? as expressions of God's great love for us. Now the situation in Galatia that brought about Paul's admonitions to the people is, is this situation that people were caught up in the hedonisms of the Greek culture, you know, carousing, excessive drinking, addictions to prescription meds, acquiring stuff, Jealousy, anger, excessive addiction to politics, quarreling, prejudice about toward uh, immigrants, and, and so much more. And, oh, wait a minute, that's us I'm talking about, isn't it? Uh, well, it's not attractive behavior, is it? it? It can be bullying, aggressive, unkind, and unwelcome. This is behavior that has nothing to do with the kingdom of God, and it doesn't help us draw people toward God and toward his love. So what kind of people are we? Like those I just mentioned, or people of love, grace, mercy, kindness, patience, gentleness. Enter stage right, nine kisses from the Holy Spirit. Most theologians separate these into three general categories. The first three are supposed to be about relationship, to God, the second three about our relationship, and the last, uh, our relationship to others. But those are artificial categories, and I doubt seriously if Paul had those kind of nuances in mind as he was writing to the people. So, these virtues are meant to stand on their own, not to be lumped together. So let's take a brief look at them and how they might influence our work and our relationship to others, even this next week. So the first I want to talk about is the kiss of joy. Joy is this emotion of great delight and happiness caused when you enter with your cheerful attitude. It's what we see every week when we come in here. I'll tell you, this is a great way to start off our Sunday morning because we come in here and you're always excited to see each other and share life together. And it just, I'll tell you, it encourages us. And you need to know that, and we appreciate it. Do we make others glad that they are here with us? Yeah, you do. 
That's why this room is full most of the time. This is not just happiness, a state of well-being and contentment. Joy is that spike of energy, a rush of ecstasy, a squealing, jumping to, to see someone that you've been apart from. After the spike of joy, we settle then down into that state of happiness because joy can't be sustained at that spike level. It's like the moment at TNT when your name is called and you know you're gonna get that styrofoam box of handmade, homemade cookies, right? And, and then you settle into happiness knowing that you get to take those home if you can get them away from your table mates. <laughs> Our Christian joy comes from that rush of joy when someone repents and turns to Jesus or an alcoholic celebrates another year of sobriety. Or when we serve someone else and we witness the joy on their faces as we have been a blessing to them. Have you had any of those spikes of joy lately? Joy comes from the Lord. I have said these things to you that you may that so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete, John 15, 11. You see, it's Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit that completes our joy. We can't do it on our own. Next is the kiss of peace. Boy, we live in a world of shouting politics and, and shrieking politicians, racial anger, litigation, a culture of confrontation and complaining. But the person who lives with inner peace spreads a goodwill that other people just can't help but sense and be drawn to. It is a quiet, still pool of water in your life which diffuses the unrest of others. This is a virtue Jesus bestowed on his disciples directly. He didn't say to them, I give you patience, did he? I never heard him say that. What he did say is, I give you peace. I give you, I leave you my peace. My peace I leave with you. Peace is not natural. It comes from God through the Holy Spirit to bless you with a quality you never thought you could experience. Having peace is also something you can share with others. I think it comes, uh, I see it most readily in people who are experiencing chronic pain and disease and yet they are supernaturally at peace. You probably know some people like that. Peace from the Holy Spirit is like no other. Next is the kiss of patience. If it is, it is truly a state of being far away from anger. It allows others to work at their pace. You know the patient one. He's the person that's sitting on the parking lot of I-10 at 4.30 in the afternoon and doesn't feel like he has to be like the other driver who makes 50 lane changes to get ahead two cars. <laughs> he knows that knot is going to loosen. You can lose patience, but one way to keep it is to adjust your expectations. Lose your need to be right. Lose your will to be in control. Lose those things that create tension. Maybe like the movie Frozen, we need to just let it go. Patience may look like inaction when re in reality, patience is the power of timing your action. Patience waits for the right time, the right place, the right way and in accordance with what Jesus says and his ways. Next is the kiss of kindness and goodness. These go together. In some translations, the Greek is translated as generosity, but that's an odd translation for this word. The word only occurs four times in the New Testament and rarely in secular Greek writing. So Paul chose this word intentionally. Goodness is intrinsic. It's, uh, it's innate. It's a state of being. Uh, we identify a good person by saying things like, she doesn't have a, a bad bone in her body. Or we might say, he is just, a, uh, just the salt of the earth. 
someone who is innately uh, good in, in what they do and how they react. Kindness now is really the arms and legs of goodness. This is the action of goodness. Goodness without kindness is a sort of self-righteousness, maybe even sanctimonious. Kindness without goodness, on the other hand, is a poser, a politician kissing babies. Goodness in the heart is revealed in the kindness toward others, but both come from the Holy Spirit. Next is the kiss of faithfulness. Being full of faith is the result of brimming with goodness, brimming with the confidence and the faithfulness of God. Like Abraham, where, where Paul described him as hoping against all hope, he still believed. He did not weaken in faith. That's from Romans 4, 18 and 19. The doubtful person lives in uncertainty, hesitation, and fear, wondering what will happen next? Where is the next shoe going to drop? Our faithfulness is a virtue that blesses others. When you are faithful, others see that and they, they absorb that, if you will. They learn to depend on you. To have a faithful friend is, a, is one of the rarest of things, isn't it? And you can be that person with the help of the Holy Spirit. The kiss of gentleness. It is perhaps the essence of the golden rule. It's the absence of aggression, psychological or physical abuse and self-promotion. Gentleness is goodness and kindness of the greatest sort. A soft word and an understanding heart. It allows people the room to mature at their pace without forcing your will upon them. Gentleness perhaps epitomizes the nature and character of Jesus best. You cannot be Christ-like and not be gentle. Jesus said, come to me, all who of you who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Matthew 11, 28 and 29. You see, gentleness results in rest. Don't we need a little bit of rest in our culture? The kiss of self-control. Oh, I had to come to this one. <laughs> when you have restraint and self-discipline, you identify as a person to be trusted and dependable, when others are falling apart, you remain in control. You become a harbor in the storm. You become a rock and a refuge. You don't need to be right all the time. Have the last word or have instant gratification. You know how to wait, how to control your tongue, and to return measured responses. Self-control comes from an abundance of the Holy Spirit outpouring and working in you and faith of his presence no matter what the outside circumstances happen to be right now. <laughs> Finally, we get to the kiss of love. Now, in Paul's list, love is first, of course, but perhaps it is best left till last right now because it's this love that uh, encompasses all the other eight virtues. The word, of course, is agape. You don't have love if you hold on to pride and you are undisciplined, impatient, and joyless. This is the kind of love Paul writes of in the love chapter, 1 Corinthians 13. It is the crowning virtue of all encompassing other virtues. John Stott, theologian, once wrote about these virtues that the mere recital of these Christian graces should be enough to make the mouth water and the heart beat faster, for it is a portrait of Jesus Christ. To the extent we are able to express the great love of Christ, we express, express the passion of Christ for each and every person, and it's that passion that comes out through us through the power of the Holy Spirit for other people. 
So if you struggle with one of these virtues, you can, by inviting and then cooperating with the Holy Spirit, experience and mature in that virtue. Now, kissing day isn't just once a year. It's every day when we follow Jesus. So break out the spiritual lip balm <laughs> and the spiritual breath freshener, maybe some real stuff too, and let's get to spiritual kissing. Let's express the love of God through love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Independence Day is coming, but this is our Dependence Day. This is our day for our dependence on God, our Creator, Jesus, our Savior, and the Holy Spirit who sustains us. Would you pray with me? Lord, in the quiet of the moment, I realize that we struggle with these virtues. We struggle to live as a faithful people of God. So Lord, I, I repent of those places where I fail. And I pray uh, that repentance for others here. And Lord, if there's one who has yet to say yes to you, to follow you, yes, I need you in my life. I'm tired of living with all of that stuff. Lord, I pray even now as they pray that prayer in their hearts that you hear that prayer and you assure them of your grace and your love for them to free them, to bring us into a place of freedom for that is what you've created us to be, a free people, freed from the world around us and the burdens of the world, free to be uh, total and complete followers of you. So Lord, thank you that you hear our prayers. Thank you that you offer forgiveness. Thank you that you give freedom. Help us to live fully into the kisses of your grace. And so it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 <coughs> In a real sense, Holy Communion is yet another kiss from God for us. It's a, a pure kiss of His grace poured out upon us, each of us, that we might experience His love in, in new ways every time we share in it. More than just a simple piece of bread and a dip in the juice, it's Christ giving us once more his love. And we need that. We need to keep coming back. And so when Jesus breaks the bread and said, take this and eat this, each one of you, and do this in remembrance of me, it's with a passion for you that Jesus offers that. It's with his passion that he says, take this cup and drink this, each one of you, and do this in remembrance of me. And so, Holy God, take these gifts, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ. Your love poured out into us. Fill us with your love and grace. Fill us with your virtues of love, joy, and all the others, Lord, that we need so desperately in our lives. Help us to reflect you clearly and accurately every day. That nobody can mistake that we are a people of Jesus. We are a people redeemed by God. We are a people loved by God. And so we give thanks and praise to you as we share together in these gifts. Amen. I invite you to come, uh, perhaps resting a bit in quiet as you share in these gifts.